Hello, welcome to Rock Solid. Uh, we're back again. It's another week. It's another Sunday or whatever day it is that you've clicked on this video. Um, and that means it's time for another Rock Solid session. Uh, I'm going to get Frankie to come in in a moment, who is uh, part of our youth team. And she's going to be leading us through the session today. Uh, and today we're going to be thinking about mission and discipleship. They're two quite big words. I don't know how much you've thought about them or kind of studied them. But Frankie's going to be asking the question today, how do I make the most of my life? So uh, why don't we get ready to uh, delve into this session with Frankie now. Hello, welcome to this week's video for Riverside Youth. I'm Frankie and I'm so excited to be leading you with this session today. And thanks so much for joining with us, whether that's it's online, at home, in groups or at Riverside House. Today we're going to be looking at the question, how to make the most of my life, which I must say is quite a big question to ask, but we're going to explore it together. And to start off, I'm gonna ask you the question, how do you live your life to the maximum? So take a bit of time now to answer that question with the people around you. Great, thanks for taking the time to chat about that and I'm sure you guys have thought of some great ideas on how to live your lives to the maximum. And maybe it's helped you think about how much you feel you're living your life to the maximum at the moment. So now we're going to play a game and for this activity we're going to do a work together challenge. So for that I'm going to need a little bit of help. So I've got Lydia and Ella here to help me with this game. And for this game I want you to split into two teams. Uh, if there isn't enough of you though, just try and do it in one team. And you're going to need uh, scrap pieces of paper, so try and get used paper or newspaper that's been used if you can. Um, and you need enough pieces of paper for everyone in your team plus one more. Okay? And this is going to be a challenge where we're going to make a path. Um, so I'm going to first lay out the four pieces of paper. And what you're going to do is step on the first place, the person in the front, and move all the way to the end. And then your team is going to follow. And then the person at the back needs to pass the piece of paper forward and you put it down and make a, take a step and keep going <laughs> and keep going <laughs> and you'll keep doing that until you reach the other end of the room okay and I want you guys to race so if you're in two teams I want you to line up on the two sides of the room and try and get across to the other side of the room and the first team to get across is the winner. If you are just one group, I want you to set yourselves a time limit and see how fast you can do it. So try and give yourself a challenging one, don't go for one that's too easy. Okay, all right, have fun. you guys have fun doing that game and that we got lots of winners winning team make sure that you shake the hands of the team that didn't win because it's just good sportsmanship so anyway how did you guys get on did any of your journeys across the room go a bit wonky and windy did any of you have to make your way around obstacles in the room great uh, so we're going to move on to our main topic now how to make the most of my life in a world of lots of choices, what subjects should I choose for my GCSEs? What hobbies do I want to do? How do I want to spend my time and who with? What kind of person do I want to be? It may feel like the decision making is endless. Maybe you feel a bit like a fish out of water, not really belonging and longing to be somewhere else or doing something else. Or maybe you have no idea about the things you'd like to do and the idea of making a decision on something is a bit overwhelming. Well, we're going to look into how Jesus comes into all of this. So there's a story in Luke chapter 24 set after Jesus's crucifixion. 
Two grieving, defeated and confused disciples give up and decide to leave Jerusalem. They are on a road to a place called Emmaus. There, Jesus appears to them, but the disciples don't recognise him. They speak to him about what has happened and how they are feeling. They don't understand why the person who they believe to be the Messiah had to die. They've heard rumours that he's appeared to people, but they haven't seen him. So who is going to save the world now? To which Jesus challenges them, claiming that they are slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. We're going to take a look at what happens after now. So, as they approach the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he was going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread and gave thanks, broke it and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, they recognised him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were our hearts not burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened up the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them, assembled together and saying, it's true, the Lord has risen and appeared to Peter. Then the two of them told what had happened to them on the way and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. Now, if you can imagine, the disciples have gone through a pretty awful time. They saw the one they believed to be the Messiah, the chosen one, die in front of them. They are mourning and confused and not really sure what is next. This random man comes along and walks with them and they do a kind thing and invite him in to stay with them. They've gone on this whole journey with this man and it's not until they break bread that they realise it, it was Jesus walking with them all along in their time of hardship. It was only when they looked back that they realised that their hearts were burning whilst they were with him. Jesus was doing something within them. This immediately opens their eyes and corrects their paths and they head right back to Jerusalem where they belong to follow the path that Jesus intended for them. Life as a follower of Jesus is a bit like that. We will often wonder, not really sure what's next or what to choose. We can even walk in the completely wrong direction like the disciples did. But when we trust in Jesus, our paths will be put straight. In Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, we read, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will put your paths straight. I find this verse very encouraging and it's helped me a lot throughout my life so far. So I want to encourage you with it. Whatever path we choose, Jesus has got you. God will be in it and he will help us make the most of it and guide us through it even when we make giant mistakes he's still there helping reshape the path of our lives when they are windy full of obstacles and when they are nice smooth roads it's a little bit like the game we played at the start we move forward in life one step at a time trusting that God is preparing the next step for us even if we can't see it initially the path is being made as we go along sometimes winding and with obstacles. Once we've reached a distance, we can look back and see how far we've come and all God has done for us in the process. When we lean on God and trust him with our lives, amazing things can happen. We will do things that we never expected to do and become the people we never expected to be. So lean into him, trust him, he has you in his hands and you will be able to look back one day and see all the beautiful things that he's done in your life. So of all the choices that you are going to make in your life, good choices and most likely some not so good choices, the best choice we can make is to hand our lives over to the one who created us, the author of history, the one who gives us wisdom, love, discernment and provides for us all that we need. Sometimes in order to understand 
the best way to live our lives with Jesus. It's good to look back and see what he has already done for us. So now I want you guys to take a moment to think back over the last year or few years. Can you see a pattern of God working in your life? Can you see him reshaping your paths to make them straight? Can you see him changing your heart and helping you to see more clearly? Have you seen this change in someone else you know too? So just take a moment to pause the video and answer those questions. We're going to take some time to pray now, to thank God for the things that we've just reflected on. We're also going to thank him for the life he is continually paving for us. So if you've yet to really see God working in your life, but you want to start this journey with him, if you are ready, you can ask, Lord God, author of creation, I give my life to you. I trust you with every step of my life. Help me to lean on you. Jesus, as I walk every step. You can choose to say this out loud or you can pray internally. Take a moment now just to pray these things together or pray about what you've heard today. Thank you so much for listening and taking part today. It's been great fun. Before we go, I'd like to set you with a challenge. This week of reading Proverbs 3, there's a lot of wisdom that can be pulled out of it and it helps give full context to the little extract that we look today. Um, so goodbye everyone and see you next week. Thanks guys, bye.